Hi everyone, hope you're well. It's Sunday evening. Uh, my name's Arshil Ahi, and tonight we're going to be talking about the three steps success to rent to rent. Uh, now, before we f move any further, like if you can, on your far right hand side of your screen, you should have a control panel box. If you can just say a quick hello, let me know that you're online, that you can hear me nice and loudly and clearly, and that would be fantastic so we can move forward. So, uh, I think I'll pronounce it right. Mikel says hello. Hi, Roy. Hi, Mike. Hi, Stuart. Uh, quite a few of you logged in tonight, so we're going to keep moving forward. So there's a lot that we're going to cover tonight. So, um, yeah, we are going to be moving at a bit of a pace. If, if there's anything that you feel like that you've missed out on, feel free to let me know. We'll try and cover it as we go along. So first of all, <coughs> Always like to say thank you. Thank you so much for trusting me with your time this evening. I appreciate that time is the most precious commodity and I guarantee that this is gonna be the best investment that you're gonna make. So what we're gonna be looking at over the next 60 minutes, we're gonna be looking at very simply how to make money in property without actually owning a property, how to, buy a pro how to build a property portfolio at the speed of your ambition, how to build a property portfolio whilst juggling a full-time job and yes it is possible and finally the system that you need to run a property business using none of your own time so what we're going to be also looking at is uh, we're also going to be looking at a number of other things to ask such as does this really work in London how can we work with agents how can we find landlords so you're in the right place if you want a simple to follow system to system to bring more deals. You're in the right place if you've hit a wall when it comes to growing your rent to rent business. More importantly, you're in the right place if you're looking for some fresh ideas to secure more deals. Does that kind of make, does that kind of make sense? So, uh, you know, do they all resonate? Is there any other reason why you think you're here? We're going to go through that shortly. So, why should you listen to me? Who is Arshilahi? So, first of all, I'm a uh, author of a best-selling book called Boom Bust and Back Again, and you can actually find it on Amazon. Uh, I've not, I'm not a 16-year-old, but I'm not a 16-year property veteran. I'm a little bit, I think it's 18 years now, who I can say that I've earned my scars because I've been through some good times, been through some bad times, and back again to tell tell, and that's the name of my book, Boom Bust and Back Again. So I run a group of letting agencies as well, and I have been doing so for the best part of 10 years. That is called Rent Me Now. And um, in just over well, in just over two years, I built a rent to rent portfolio that now gives me quite handsome thirty thousand pounds a month cash flow. So that's a little bit about me, as well as that I write in two very well uh, two very well known property magazines. So you can catch me every month in YPN, your property network. You can also catch me also in the uh, HMO magazine as well. So they're two very well-known magazines. So what is this property management system? So people talk about rent to rent. Uh, I like to refer it as a property management system because this system actually turns you into an expert, almost like a property manager. Now the system gives the landlord everything that they want from a property. A guaranteed passive income plus a lot of time and other stuff that they can have as benefits. The system enables you to make a passive income, a property income without actually owning a house. And this system is known as rent to rent Now, just whilst I've got everyone online, can you just give me a quick, not almost, not a hello, but if you can, just let me know what's your experience with rent to rent Do you know a lot about it? Do you not know anything about it? Just so that I can see where I need to take this this evening. Okay, so Darren Stradaway is coming. He goes, I'm completely new to it. And uh, Mike says, I haven't tried it. Uh, Mikhail says that a little bit. Okay, so, um, so Adam says, got my business set up. Knowledge, but just getting started. I know nothing, I know a bit. I know a decent amount. I uh, have one, but need to know, but need more. Want to try it. Okay, so interesting. So we've got a lot of new, new guys on there. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. So what is rent to rent? We're going to go through this in greater detail because there are lots of myths about rent to rent. In essence, you manage the landlord's property. 
So the way that I the way that I see it, sorry, and apologies that the, the screen may jump from time to time. You are similar to a letting agency, but the beautiful thing with rent to rent is that you give the landlord a guaranteed property income, which is a better deal than a let, which is a much better deal than a letting agency because letting agencies will only pay for the period that it's occupied, and when they've when they've received rent. So as a result, you being the person offering to take the property off a landlord, you're in a much better position. So it's pretty much a four-step process. So you rent a property on a single let basis off a landlord, which seems pretty normal. Would you agree? So let's just say that you've got a three-bedroom, a landlord's renting a three-bedroom house. He hasn't multi-let it previously. And you take it off him, giving him the single let price. So let's just use Birmingham as an example because someone's mentioned Birmingham. Um, and let's just say that a three bed house with two reception rooms in Birmingham could be circa five hundred pounds a month, between five and six hundred pounds a month. Now you get the permission of the landlord to rent out the rooms individually. So he gives you the authority and confirmation that he's gonna be happy for you to turn it into in essence renting it out by the room and turn it into what is called a HMO or a house of multiple occupation you then rent the property out by the room turning one let into potentially four to six simple uh, separate lets now sort of before we go any further Martin says um, Martin said straight away goes that he's got no sound can everyone else hear me clearly and correctly just if you can, that would be fantastic, and just let me know. Okay, so everyone else can hear. So Martin, if you can, log out and log back in. So, and then the fourth step is that you receive, whereas you're paying the landlord, let's just use for this example, paying him £600 a month, you're now receiving multiple rents from each of the people living in the rooms. You pay your single let rent, and the utility bills and you bank the difference that kind of makes sense I've done a few diagrams here just so that we can hit it home so here we have it so here's a landlord may have an issue may have a property that he's struggling to let the agents not performing the agent struggling um, but you know they're not advertising it correctly or they're, they're they're putting their focus on somewhere else now you is are the investor you are the investor, here you are. And you approach the landlord and you say, well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Landlord, I'll offer you the full, let's say 600 pounds a month that you would have previously got. Now you've got to bear in mind that previously the landlord, if they're running, if, they're, if they've given it to a letting agency, they wouldn't be getting 600 pounds a month, would they? Because out of that 600 pounds, the agent would take their 10%, which is 60 pounds, and they would then charge VAT on that uh, 60 pounds if they're that registered business, which most letting agents are. So in essence, that landlord is not getting 600, he's actually getting 600 minus 72 pounds, which means that he's actually getting 528 pounds. Not to take into consideration the void periods that it's been empty for, not to take into consideration the maintenance that he would have to do, not to take into consideration other things like the gas safety checks, not to take into consideration the EPCs, also not to take into consideration, well, there's lots of things that you need to take into consideration. Um, so, yeah, in, in essence, when you start looking at it on that basis, they're not getting £600 a month. Now, there is a myth that and lots of people throw out figures. They say, well, my property is generating... 600 pounds a month uh, and then when i'm direct to a landlord i always say well really you're not because as a 600 pounds if you're paying an agent you've lost best part of 100 pounds so you're down to best part of 500 pounds and then it's been empty for two months so it's you know for argument's sake i've had a i went to met a landlord on friday now admittedly the beautiful thing with rent to rent is that you don't just you, there's a number of ways that you can take on buildings as a rent-to-rent. -rent. I take on lots of buildings on single lets as well. 
if the figures stack up. And we'll be talking about how to make the figures stack in a short while. So landlord, he had, a, he had a property. If you can find a landlord that's had a problem tenant previously, that is pretty much like music to anyone's ears because they will hand you that property with no questions asked because they've already felt the pain and they're extremely motivated. And so they will literally hand you the keys. So the landlord here is in pain and he's motivated to do the deal. And this is where you come in. You provide a solution saying, guys, here's who I am. This is what I do. Here's how I can help you. And as a result, here's the benefits of us doing business together. As a result of you taking the property on, you're now going to let the property to multiple people buy the room as opposed to buy the house. And the income that you're going to get is going to far outweigh the outgoings, which means that you're going to be making a profit. So you've got to bear in mind that obviously you have to, you know, we've talked about points one and two, turning the property into HMO. Now, uh, there are a couple of things that you need to bear in mind that there are some legislation surrounding houses, multiple occupation. So there's certain things like Article 4, there's certain things that you need to know about. We're not going to be able to cover all, all this in such a short space of time. But Article 4, you need to uh, take into consideration licensed versus unlicensed HMOs and the fire, fire implications and whether the property requires license. Most councils across the country are completely different. So you have to, you know, you also have to work within the jurisdiction of what your local council is saying. So in that respect, uh, you, you'll, there'll be certain things that you need to know, but they're not hard to find out. And more importantly, it's very, it is very straightforward. There are certain things that are coming in later on this year saying that all HMOs, which rent to any, anything in excess of four people are going to be licensable HMOs. So there's certain legislation that you do need to know about. Now, why is rent to rent important? Now, just out of curiosity, why do you think rent to rent is important? Can you just let me know why, why has rent to rent sparked your interest this evening? Feel free just to put a few words in there. Okay, and whilst you do that, I'm going to read a couple of the comments that have come in. Sorry, bear with me. I'm just going through it. Okay. Um, okay. So some of the question, uh, some of the answers are coming in. High cash flow with little risk, little no money down, no money down strategy. Interesting essay. Biggest issues trying to find a rent to rent. Don't need big sums to start. Okay. Interesting. Getting into property with little capital. Okay. So the general consensus. Uh, Okay, so the general consensus is that majority of it is that you don't need to pay deposit. Um, you don't need to pay deposit, and off the back of that, you off the back of that, you um, yeah, you don't need to pay deposit. And, uh, no need for credit checks. So that's general consensus. Okay to see if I like the HMO style of letting without big financial commitment. I like that, Paul. The reason why I say that is because it is low risk. So <clears throat> why is rent to rent important? Very speed, a very, um, first thing that I like about it is speed. Where else can you acquire a number of properties quickly without having to buy them? So without putting in the 25% deposit, without putting in the, you know, the solicitors, uh, without without having to deal with solicitors, without having to deal with mortgage companies, surveyors, uh, and more importantly, tying up a load of capital. Now, that's what I like. Speed, it can be done by pretty much like, I can go to a property and I can have a look around it and I can pretty much negotiate a deal there and then, which means that I could potentially walk away with some keys 
either there or then, depending on how motivated the landlord is, or potentially um, have the keys by the end of that day or within the next couple of days. Where else would you be able to do that? You wouldn't be able to do that if you bought it because obviously you have to go through negotiation, you have to go through the sale process, and that generally takes on a good, uh, on a good, if it was to go smoothly, minimum between two and four weeks. Now, the other reason why I like rent to rent is very simply because I'm very calculated when it comes to risk. I like low risk strategies, and rent to rent can be a low risk strategy just purely because if it doesn't work out for you, you can put in break clauses into the agreement where simply you hand the property back and you say, okay, so Billy has turned around and says, we can't hear you. I just want to make sure that everyone else can hear. Um, and I'll tell Billy to log out, log out and log in. Um, just want to make sure that we keep you online. So everyone else can say that they can hear fine. Okay, brilliant. Uh, okay, so it's a low risk strategy, which means that you literally can put in, now just so that you know, this is a little secret between you and I. In all my rent to rents, and I've got 38 properties on rent to rent, in all of them, I put in a break clause where I potentially could hand the property back at any point within that period, giving anywhere between a month and three months' notice. The maximum. I'll ever give is three months notice the lowest is one month so in essence my risk to that property is one month's payment or three months payment I can also get away when I say get away I can also negotiate having not to pay a deposit for the property now it is a low uh, it is a low capital strategy there are some properties where you may need to spend some money on them to bring them up to up to a standard. I also take on ready-made HMOs, and that's my preferred method. I take on blocks of flats, which is also a preferred method of mine. I also take on single lets. If a property is in need of too much work, I would expect, and providing that I think it's going to be a viable transaction, I'm happy to put money into someone else's property, but I would want a rent-free period. To compensate for that so that I can recoup my money first. Now there's one property that I took on here in Wolverhampton and I actually got 12 months rent free just purely because a landlord had a builder came in, stripped the property back to almost like bare brick and ran away. Left, you know, this landlord, uh, this builder already had £12,000 worth of landlord's money. So the landlord now has two options. He can leave it empty uh, knowing that he doesn't have the funds to do it up or he could give it to someone like me, knowing that I could bring the property back into use. And as a result, spend money on it, but know that they're not going to get rent for the for, oh yeah, for the short period, being 12 months. However, they're going to get rent for the following seven years at a certain level that we've set. So, you know, when you look at it from that point of view, it is a real win-win scenario. You've got to have a look at the, what the pain and what the motivation is. And I like to call it the no excuses way to invest in property because there really is no real excuse for you not to do this. Talking about speed, no waiting on solicitors, no waiting on surveyors, no waiting on their, you know, the purchase of their lawyers and their lawyers. Deals can be done at the speed of a handshake and a signed contract and you can grow your portfolio at the speed of your ambition, which means that you can do this at your pace and a pace that's comfortable for you. So I know some people that take properties on every other week. I know some people that take one property on a month. I know some people that take properties on every other month. So it all comes down to you and what's comfortable for you. Now, cost is a good one because no deposit is required, providing that you can negotiate that. As I said, it's a no excuses way to invest in property. And you simply pay for the refurbishment if it requires it, or if you can take on an already underperforming HMO, and you could potentially just spruce it up. Now, I like to take on, one of my niches is to take on underperforming HMOs, and where they've got uh, a few rooms vacant and they haven't been able to fill them. That's where I think I add real benefit because the landlords 
pretty much at that point are either losing or breaking even. And it's a simple negotiation as far as I'm concerned. Now, the reason why I like when I say no risk, low risk, because when you own a property, there's lots of things that you're governed by. Interest rates, mortgage, uh, which will also then determine the, the amount that you pay on your mortgage. More importantly, the one thing that I like is that you determine when and when, when you start it and when you end it. Now, for argument's sake, when you buy a property, the only way that you can exit that market or exit is by selling that property. Now, how long is it going to take to sell a property? Is it going to take, um, you know, with the best will in the world, is it going to take a month? You know, there's some properties that have been on the open market for years. So, but in the meanwhile, if it's on the open market, potentially it could be empty, which means that you're still paying money out on that property. Now, the beautiful thing with rent to rent is that house prices don't affect you because you don't own it. Interest rates don't affect you because you don't own it. It's easy to analyze the right property by searching the tenant demand. So for argument's sake, if you're going to embark on the rent-to-rent -rent journey, spare room will become your best friend. Or spare room will be the best website. Spare room, easy roommate. There's a few of us that will mention that are going to be the uh, your best friends over the next few years. And success is only requires your focus and your determination. When we talk about reoccurring income, quitting your job can be scary and being your own boss is also scary. But once you have a reoccurring income, that's as regular as clockwork, maybe it's not so scary because then it buys you time. Time then gives you more freedom. Freedom then allows you to do other things that you really want to do. Now, I've helped hundreds, if not thousands of people on the rent to rent journey. And I've seen lots of people quit their job once they're at, once they're at a level where uh, they can, they're financially, where they've taken on a certain amount of properties where they're financially secure. And we'll be talking about them in a short while. So this is always an interesting question. Why now? Why is it so important to do rent to rent now? And the reason is very simple. There's a surging tenant demand. We're going to be talking about there's a falling supply of single let properties and rents are expected to increase by 20% over the next five years. Now, you've probably all already heard about all the other things that are going on in the market at the moment. So Section 24, where landlords can no longer uh, recoup any of their interest cover. There's lots of other things that come into place. So things are being, well, landlords are being squeezed and the property industry is being squeezed left, right and centre which means that profit margins are falling. But guess what? As rent to rent, it doesn't affect you because the figure that you agree to pay is fixed. The only thing that you have to ensure is that the property remains occupied. Now, when we talk about surging tenant demand, home ownership is at a 30-year low. 25% of young Britons think that and the only way that they're going to be able to get on the property ladder is when they are left an inheritance, a property in inheritance. Bank and Momodella funding, 30% uh, of first-time buyers. Young, the young generation, unfortunately, the cost of living has increased. However, their income hasn't increased sufficiently to support the cost of living. Therefore, generation rent is growing and is here to stay, regardless of what the government do, are going to do. You know, okay, they've helped with the home, uh, help to buy scheme, etc. but they've still reported that there hasn't been sufficient uptake on it. Home ownership in England is at its lowest level in 30 years as housing crisis. They tried to put on additional stamp duty to investors to stop them buying more stock or to penalise them, should we say. However, it still hasn't helped first-time buyers because if they haven't got the funds to buy, you know, regardless, that they can have all the stock in the world, but if they can't afford it, it's irrelevant. And as I said, one in ten young Britons will leave the UK and a call to think only an inheritance will get them a home. 
these are all reported so it's not stuff that we're making up by the way this is all stuff that's been reported okay so uh if you just bear with me a second guys i'm just gonna get to one sec one section And the number of landlords planning to uh, to sell doubled since the buyers elect crackdown. Uh, so expert warned renters will suffer. Now that's a good thing from our point of view. Now as a renter, rent. Um, okay, so Stephen's coming with a good question. Uh, he goes, well, if if the HMO is underperforming, how do you know you can do better? Uh, so David says that we keep losing our voice, keep losing my sound. Could be that we're flicker, uh, we're going through the we're going through the slides, David. So you may potentially lose a little bit. If you can let me know, if if lots of people are losing me, feel free to let me know. Uh, okay, so Stephen's uh, Stephen's question. So if it's underperforming, if it's an underperforming HMO, how do we know that we can do better? <clears throat> the honest answer, Stephen, is that we're going to be more determined to make that property work now for argument's sake if you're a if you know that you've got outgoing on that property and you've got to pay that landlord rent you're more motivated to make that property work because you're reliant on the income of that to pay the landlord other thing that you've got to take into consideration is that landlords sometimes get a little bit sloppy they get a little bit uh the way that i find it is that i prefer to try and find tired landlords now I met, I've met one landlord just before Christmas. He's had a house empty near enough the best part of four to five months. And when we went into the property, we knew exactly why. It was out, it was outdated. It was nowhere near the the current market. What the rest of the market is demanding, and he's just not really bothered. Yeah, he's got no outgoing on that. Okay, that's that's probably the reason why he's not really motivated enough because it's not costing him anything. But in the same respect, what what we find is that we're able to we're able to do a lot better job than what the landlords doing because we're more motivated. We'll put some better pictures up. We'll do something with the lighting. We'll do something. We'll inject some color in via some furnishings. We'll do some staging. Uh, we'll be a little bit more proactive chasing tenants and uh, finding tenants. Uh, and these are things that other landlords are not doing. And, you know, admittedly, uh, if you're if you're not already doing that and if you've got a HMO, admittedly, you will get voids. But there are so, so lots of ways of being creative with your advertising to attract certain kinds of tenants because you've got to stand out in a crowded marketplace. And that's not just in property. That's in business full stop. So there are lots of ways that you can get your properties filled. Now, for argument's sake, uh, just giving you a little tip here. I don't take deposits. I refuse to take. Uh, I refuse to take deposits on any of my HMOs. Uh, what I tend to do is I, I take guarantors. Now, if me and Stephen both had properties on the same street, and Stephen was reliant on month's rent up front, month's rent as a deposit, and a referencing fee, a guarantor, da 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 da. And I just say, I'll tell you what, just moving with your first month's rent, where do you reckon tenants are going to lean towards? They're going to go to the one where they can get access or entry into with a lower cost and a lower barrier to entry, which is pretty much the same with what we're doing to landlords. So once you start to become creative with it, you can actually do really well out of it. And more importantly, you can still have the same level of security by having a homeowner guarantor. So I'll give you a few more I'll give you a few more uh, different you know, publications of what people have posted over the last few weeks. Private rents set to, set to rise by 20%. Poor households being put, you know, been put out of the market. So there's never been a better time to start your rent-to-rent -rent business. They've been pushed, landlords have been pushed into higher tax brackets with the effect of Section 24. So as a result of that, you know, landlords are prepared to do something which is going to provide them with a guaranteed income. And here's how it works. <clears throat> so just as an illustration point of view, so you've got one property here where you've got £1,000. Let's just say that you're paying £1,000 per calendar month to rent to a landlord. Now, you're going to rent out the rooms, uh, let's say £500 a month. Um, sorry, I'm just going to lose you there once we get to this. 
So you're going to pay, uh, so you're going to rent out the rooms at £500 a month. So let's say that you turn it into a five bed HMO, which is two story, which means that at present it's unlicensed. Uh, it's two, two and a half thousand pounds per, uh, per calendar month in rental income. Now take out the bills, so the thousand pounds to the landlord. Now, bills, when we talk about bills, we talk about accounts, tax, water rates, electricity, gas, uh, potential broadband, potential cleaner. Um, and other little bits and pieces that you may throw in. So you're going to potentially be left with a profit of around £750 a month from a property that you don't own, from a property that you've got no intention of owning, and you're simply using almost like as a cash cow. This, in essence, creates a house for multiple occupation. And, you know, in essence, <coughs> going back to what I said previously, you can do this in accordance to the level of your ambition. So month one, you may take on one property. Month three, you may have two properties. Month five, you know, within 12 months period, it is very easy to generate 12, uh, sorry, it is very easy to generate a minimum of six properties, which where I've used an average here, which is I wouldn't take a property on personally uh, if it's generating anything less than 500 pounds per month. That's an absolute minimum. That's an absolute minimum. So on the basis that you've got six houses there, that gives you a net cash flow, a net cash flow of £3,000 a month. And you've got to remember, there's a rule of five here. Room number one pays the rent. Room number two will potentially pay any voids and buffers, maintenance, etc. Room three will pay for the utilities. Room four will pay for the council tax. Room five will be profit. Room six, so it's normally room between rooms, Half of room four and room five will be profit, and the a majority of it will be paying the utilities and the outgoings. So remember, it's paying for itself. Now, one thing that you have to also bear in mind with rent to rent, and we're going to get to the point about London has fine landlords in a second, <coughs> is that don't cheat yourself. Because if you cheat yourself, the only person you're cheating, obviously, is, is yourself. And the only person that's going to end up costing you is yourself. I see lots of people come to me and say, Ash, what do you reckon to this deal? And I said, well, it doesn't work. And I said, but they said, but why? It goes, but we can do this, we can do that. I said, you're, only, you're chasing the numbers. If you're chasing the numbers, it's the wrong way to do the deal. The deal has to stack up. The, de so the deal has to stack up. And if you're chasing the numbers, it's the wrong way of doing it. The average utilities is around £65 per month per person. Does that make sense? So if you've got five people in a property, that's £65 times that by five per person per month. Then take out the council tax. You're, you know, it's very easy to find out how much the council tax is. There's a certain website. Uh, I think it's rate my council tax. Something like that. Uh, if you type in how much is my council tax for a property, if you put in the postcode, it'll even tell you how much the council tax is for that property per month and per year. You've got repairs and maintenance, which we put on average about £20 per room per month. Voids is the gross rent divided by 12. Um, you've got insurance, you've got broadband, you've got cleaners, and the profit, you really want a minimum of £100 per room per, per, per month which will give you pretty much the maximum rents that you can offer to the landlord. So this is working backwards. So if you need to know how much you can offer the landlord, if the landlord says, well, in actual fact, the single let price is, let's say, for argument, say £500, but I know that you're going to multi-let it, you're going to make more money out of it. I want a little bit more. What can you offer me? This is a way that you'd have to pretty much work it backwards and move forward from that. Does that kind of make sense? So the max rent that you can offer this to the landlord after you've taken out all your profit, <coughs> all the other bits and pieces will tell you how much you can pay from. Now, where do we find this stock? This is probably the most important thing because uh, someone said to me earlier on in the webinar, I so apologies that I've, I've missed a question. It says, are we cutting out agents? I never recommend cutting out agents. And the reason being is that there are three ways of, <coughs> there are three ways of, getting deals. Now, first one that I would always suggest, and if you wanted to start tonight, every person has a mobile phone, or I'd like to think that every person's got a mobile phone. And as a result of that, you could literally pick up 
the phone or go through your phone book and see who owns property. The first person to give you, well, the first person that you should look in, be looking to test this out on is your friends and family. So if you've got people that are in your network, immediate network that you can help, they're gonna be the people that are gonna give you the test on this. And the reason why I say that, they already trust you, they already know you, and they know that you're not gonna almost do anything to harm them. Now, when we're dealing directly with a landlord or with a vendor, they don't know you, so they're going to need a bit of rapport building. They're going to need a little bit of trust, and exactly the same with agents, because in essence, the problem that agents have is that re they're really worried about being cut out the centre. They've got no problem with handing you the property. What they're worried about is losing the property and make, not making an income off it. So you have to incentivize agents to deal with it. So just give me an example. So direct to vendor. How do you get a direct to vendor? Now there are a couple of a uh, couple of ways that I'll tell you about straight away. Let's just see if I've listed them there. No, okay. So first one is that potentially you could build a, an army of tradespeople. Now an army of tradespeople, so this could be uh, electricians, plumbers, you know, window cleaners, whatever it may be. I and mean, what you could do is you could speak to them and say, guys, okay, I'll tell you what, I appreciate that you probably go out to a lot of landlord stock and a lot of investment stock. You know, is there a way that we could work it so that if you've been out to a property, you know that it's vacant or the landlord's got an issue with it. You know, you gave us the landlord's phone number and if I manage to secure a deal, we'll give you on average between 250 and 500 pounds for that property. That kind of makes sense. That's how you get direct to vendor. You can advertise in the back of the paper. You know, we will guarantee you, you know, looking for landlords, we will guarantee your rent for the next three or five years. We'll pay the maintenance. La -di -da -di -da. I've done all that. I've been all that and I've done all that. Uh, one, one, you can also find them on places like Spare Room. You can find them on places like Gumtree. You can find them at landlords forums. You can find them in landlords meetings. So there's, you can find them in property networking events. There's so many ways that you can go direct to vendor. You've got to spend a bit of time building rapport with them. You've got to spend a bit of time with them. But the good thing is that once you start building that rapport with landlords, if you find one landlord that's a portfolio landlord and he's prepared to give you one property as a test, providing that you treat him well, he'll give you the rest of his stock. That's a fact. You know, I deal with lots of multiple portfolio landlords. And that's what I like because I'm only really dealing with them and they know what to expect from me and that I know what to expect from them. I don't really want to be hassled by a landlord. Uh, you know, what you're doing, how you're doing, how you're getting on, how many people are living in the property, la di da di da You know, as far as they're concerned, as long as they're being paid, that's them out of the equation that allow me to carry on with my business. Now, moving on with agents. Agents are a tricky bunch of people. And the reason why I say that uh, so, sorry, I've just got a question coming. So, <clears throat> so leafleting. Okay, so someone's asked a question. Says, does leafleting etc. still work? Because I've said that you mentioned it here, but you uh, you did mention it before. Leafleting does work. You know, admittedly, it's time it's time intensive, uh, and there are so many ways of getting direct to vendor without having to, the one thing that I don't like about leafleting is simply is that you have to put out tens of thousands of leaflets. And as a result of delivering them, first you've got to figure out have they been delivered correctly. Second thing that you've got to figure out is once they've been delivered, you've then got to wait for the phone to ring. Whereas as a lot of the techniques that I actually teach is that I try and get you to actually call them, not them call you, if that makes sense. I prefer being on the phone or writing a letter. Well, I don't really like writing letters as well, but you know, the letters and leaflets do work, but they are time intense. Uh, they are, you never know, or I, I suppose a better way I can say it is that you're never in control of the actual lead. So let's just say, for argument's sake, you find a property on right move, and again, it's on with an agent, and you send it a leaflet. Now, in essence, you're cutting out that agent. I wouldn't suggest cutting out an agent because that agent can bring you multiple properties and it can allow you to scale your business 
a lot quicker than a, a just landlord that may have one or two. Does that make sense? Letting agents deal with landlords, multiple landlords, hundreds of landlords, and they can be your best friend. Now, people say, well, agents won't deal with me. It's not that they won't deal with you. They don't know what you're offering. They automatically assume that you're going to turn it into, uh, well, automatically assume that you're going to turn it into HMO. You, they automatically assume that you're going to be subletting it and potentially subletting, uh, they like to think that subletting is illegal. Uh, and that's where the conversation shuts down. Now, dealing with agents can be fantastic if you can get them on board. Now, and people say, well, you can't get deals in London. And I'm going to dispel that. Hopefully, I think I've dispelled that myth. Um, <clears throat> you, can't, you can't do deals in London. But if you've been catching my email marketing over the last couple of, over the last couple of weeks, you've seen that we've been putting out numerous amounts of deals in London and these have been a real mixture of direct to vendor and direct to agent deals and we've managed to get exclusive tea on the deals. Now the beautiful thing is one thing that I didn't mention is that if you get a rent to rent deal and you think well you know what I like the deal but I can't do it myself personally because I'm probably not financially in a position to do so at the moment that's not really a problem. The reason why I say that is that there's two things that you could do go off and get JV funding for you to do the deal together. Or alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you could still monetize the deal by selling the deal to someone that's looking, uh, someone that's looking to acquire the property. Uh, okay, so I'm just going through the questions. Okay, so Rob's coming. He goes, why do, you st uh, why do you pass these deals on, Ash? Is it because they don't stack for your requirements? No, not at all, Rob. We pass them on. is because one of the other parts of my business is that I am actually a deal sourcer and a deal trader. Now, there's the amount of deals that we see. Last year, you've got to bear in mind that we traded 483 deals. I, you know, physically, it's impossible for me to take on all these deals as well. Last year, myself, I bought best part 50 deals and i'll continue to buy on average between 20 and 30 a year last year was a good year um but it's it's a case of that you know i'd rather not just say to the landlord sorry i can't help you i'd rather or to the agent say sorry i can't help you i'd rather say okay i can't help you well no sorry wrong way to say it it's not personally one for me to take on however i can find you someone and as a result that's where you make a fee as a result of that so Amit says, how would you monetize that? Once you've got the deal and once you know that it actually makes money, you simply, you could package it up and you can sell it to your investor database. Uh, so you could sell it to other investors that you know. And, you know, one of the easiest ways of doing that is just by putting it on Facebook. You can sell it to my database, but there's a fee attached to that. So there's lots of ways that you can do it. But again, we're deviating from it. One thing that we want to do is make sure that we're, getting a deal agreed with the landlord, we're getting a deal agreed with the agent, and then deciding, do we keep it or do we sell it? And in essence, what we've done is we've sourced a deal, and then we decide after you've sourced it what you do with it. So if you are going to keep it, yeah, setting up a HMO is very straightforward. The first one's going to be a little bit time intensive because you've got to create a template and a system. <clears throat> now, I know lots of people that have created a real, you know, almost a very sleek and real system for this. So they get a property, first thing that they do, they get decorators in, then they go, they send a, a man in a van to Ikea and they pick things from aisle 24, aisle 28, and they've pretty much, everything is completely formulae. It's the same for every house. In essence, if you wanted to, you could get a property manager. Uh, a property manager is a person that you potentially employ or you do it on a self-employed basis where they where they work off a commission so that every property that they uh, every property that they let every property that they furnish etc they get commission they let and in essence what they do they follow the footsteps uh, they follow the steps so the furnishings you know a question that has come up which is quite you know, the last couple of years leasing furnishing has become quite trendy 
alternatively you buy it and then knowing that you've got that and then you can utilize that for other HMOs when you decide to hand that one back or you decide to take other ones on. Right, <clears throat> filling your HMOs. See, first you've got to acquire the HMOs, then you've got to get the HMO set up. Now you've got to get it filled and you, the way that I say this very simply is that you have to advertise it on property portals. So for argument's sake, Right Move, well, you can advertise on places like Right Move, Spare Room, Gumtree, and Easy Roommate are gonna be the three biggest ones. And then obviously you've got to accommodate viewings. Now the person that is more flexible with their viewing, so for argument's sake, let's just say that someone's on Spare Room, they said, okay, um, let's just use Vince because it's the first name that I've seen. So they've said, Vince, uh, I've seen this property, I really like what I see, you know, can I come and view it on Sunday at 11 o'clock? If Vince turns around and says, sorry, sorry, Matt, I only do uh, Monday to Friday, nine to five, he may struggle with viewings. However, the person that accommodates viewings, you know, pretty much, not, not say 24 hours around the clock, but is a little bit more lenient with their viewings to accommodate for the professional market, because bear in mind that they, they potentially also work Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, nine to five, and the only time that they can get there is Sunday, you know, chances are that you're going to be the person that manages to fill that property quickly. Managing a property can be a systemized approach. So for argument to say, once you've, once you put a tenant in, you can get them to sign all the documentation by using Adobe Echo Sign or Echo. You know, there's lots of electronic signature processes that you can utilize. And as a result of that, rents can then be collected by direct debit. Contact a uh, contact to the landlord. One thing that we tend to do now, we set up a WhatsApp group for each HMO, so that if there's an issue, what they do, they put it into the WhatsApp group because then that is in the WhatsApp group. We've also got our maintenance guys, so that instead of them contacting us to report it, we the uh, maintenance man's aware of it and he goes and deals with it directly. So there's lots of things that you can do to systemize the process. Okay, so Amit has asked a question, he goes, do the doors need to have locks on? In an ideal world, yes, just purely because you've got to look at it from a security point of view, Amit, is that if you were to live in a shared accommodation, would you be happy or would you take a property on knowing that whilst you're at work, remember that not everyone works a standard nine to five pattern, people work night shifts, people work day shifts, people work flexi shifts, <clears throat> that someone's in the is that someone's in the property and potentially if they if there's no locks on the door they could potentially walk into your room and let's say borrow your some of your belongings would you be happy with that more importantly when you when you show someone a property potentially how would they feel about that um, so there's lots of you know you've got to you've got to make it to a point you've got to make it to a point uh, where you're where you're looking at it now so uh, Oswell has mentioned something he goes how can you sell the deal if you're not regulated it's a good question actually uh, because yes as you as you rightly said suggest you you do have to be regulated almost not regulated but you've got to fall under compliance you've got to fall under compliance to be able to sell your deals or alternatively if you don't if you market the properties if you market the properties yourself then yes you have to fall into compliance or you could sell them via a third party and that person has to be compliant and just so you know that I am compliant <clears throat> so the myth about London so people say well our agents aren't going to work with you believe it or not I find that agents in London are a lot more commercially minded than agents around the rest of the UK they understand corporate lets they understand company lets they understand management agreements and it's very easy, the fact that what we say to agents very simply is that they're still going to collect their 10% off the landlord. So in a scenario, going back to where we were earlier in the webinar, if the landlord's, uh, if the landlord's renting £600 a month and they're using an agent, in essence, that landlord's going to be getting charged £72 a month. So one thing we say to the agent is that we will still rent the property through you. And the reason why we do that is to keep them in the center so that they know that they're not going to lose income. And as a result of that, they're going to also have us as a hassle-free tenant because we are going to be the tenants. Inevitably, that's what's going to happen. Does that make sense? 
Now, with regards to properties in London, people say, yeah, it's a buoyant market and it, they go really quickly. Yes, that it is. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with that. It is a very fast-paced market. But more importantly, once you've done one deal with one agent, they will be the person that will be calling you. Now, the number of deals that I've done over, uh, if you notice, I've lost, over the last couple of weeks, we've done Lewis Sean, we've done, <coughs> we've done Ilford, we've done Croydon, we've done, uh, well, Watford's not really London, but just outside Watford. Uh, Watford, there's a number of different areas all around. Uh, we've done Peckham. Uh, I'm just trying to think. And these are all properties that have either come from director, landlord, or agent. Because what we're offering them, you know, with all due respect, with regards to we're offering them the single let rent, and providing that it stacks up, I don't mind offering the single let rent. I'm going back to the point that we mentioned about the figures. If the figures stack up, you can offer them. Yeah, there's a myth that you have to offer them 30% below. Uh, the market rent. So let's say if they're renting it at £1,000 a month, uh, you go and offer them £700 a month. Let's face it, the agents, the agents work on a percentage of whatever they charge. So their commission is based on the percentage of whatever they charge. So if they're renting it at uh, £1,000 a month, if you've just, uh, they get 10% plus fat off that. So they're making on average around £120 a month. Now, if they, if you go and knock them down at seven, to seven hundred pounds, and they they agree to that, they're making ten percent of that, which is seven, seventy pounds plus the VAT, so eighty four pounds. So in essence, it's one hundred twenty pounds versus eighty four pounds. And if you try and do that, you might be lucky with one or two agents. You won't get it to a point where you can scale it, just purely because they'll think of it. And well, why should I let it to you where it's already a busy? environment that we can let it to someone else for a thousand pounds and still make that kind of money now what appeals to us what appeals about renting the property to us is that we are going to be a long-term uh, long-term agreement we are going to be uh, a hassle-free tenant because let's face it agents one of the one of the things that agents hate the most is the fact that they deal with a load of maintenance and they don't get paid for it you know, some of them charge up a, a small percentage for uh, for for maintenance but it's not really worth their time and hassle if they could have someone that's going to be in there five years where they're not going to have to hear from them and the money comes in on the first of every month or whatever date was required you're a much better bet than a normal tenant so i'm gonna very briefly we've got a lot more content to go through yes i'm just conscious of time so one thing that i'm going to talk to you about is that i i am going to be doing a two-day course which is going to be held in birmingham uh, I'll be showing you the five top ways to uh, find landlords and also speak directly with agents. I'll be showing you how to elegantly uh, persuade landlords to do business with you over anyone else every time. I'll be showing you how to find endless supply of tenants and never have to worry about voids. Uh, I'll be showing you how to use the rent to rent profit calculator, an easy and formulated spreadsheet that instantly shows you your profit from each property. The recording of the whole entire course that you can always refer to in all the presentation slides. You get the contracts, you get the management agreements, you get the guarantor documents, you get the moving in, uh, the tenant moving in documents and the furnish your property mind maps. And you get the uh, marketing letters that I write to landlords, you get the marketing letters that I write to the HMO register, and you also get the landlord persuasion spreadsheet. Going back to the point that I said that a landlord that says that they're getting 600 pounds a month, once you start to break it down, you can actually show them exactly how much they're getting and potentially negotiate a lower rent. I'll be showing you how to replace your job salary in just six months by using the easy, mass, uh, easy to master rent to rent system, and how you can get your first property in the next in the first thirty days. And finally, how to find landlords uh, on Rightmove, Spare Room, and Gumtree using our proven letter templates, and how to make landlords an offer that they can't refuse by getting them to say yes to your proposal every time. And then, finally. Um, understanding what your irresistible offer is so going back to going back to where we were just is what is your irresistible offer when we talk about irresistible offer we're talking about what is your unique selling point what makes you so special <clears throat> why would a landlord choose you over a normal tenant why would a landlord choose your company over someone else 
you've got to spell it out to them in clear as daylight uh you've got to spell it out to them in clear as daylight what you're actually offering so it could be that you're going to give them a guaranteed property income it could be that you're going to give them a free refurbishment for the landlord it's going to be a long-term let there's going to be no management fees there's going to be professional you only deal with professional tenants and there's going to be a weekly cleaner paid at your expense here's some of the other things so the internal condition uh you you agree the guaranteed start date there's no tenant queries or management no missed or late payments no empty periods so these are some of the things that you can offer now why would a landlord say no I'd like to think that I've turned this into a science as opposed to an art form by now. If a landlord says no, it will, it will be due to a handful of reasons. Believe it or not, all objections can be overcome. And over, over the two days, basically, I uh, will be showing you how, how we overcome all the objections um, by pretty much doing a, a live sales call or not not sales call lives telephone calls with agents and landlords on the day so here's the secret tip is it really possible to negotiate a discount on the rent and have the landlord thank you for it how is that possible and by showing the landlord how they're really what they're really earning now going back to my point now with the landlord if a landlord says that he's earning £600 a month, he doesn't take into consideration all the other things. He doesn't take into consideration the management fee. He doesn't take into consideration the voids, the bad debt, the, uh, the maintenance that he's paid throughout that year. And if you start to calculate all that, you'll be able to be able to negotiate a much lower rent. That's when you're direct to the landlord, by the way. How many of you guys online actually know exactly how much your properties are producing on a month-by-month -month basis how much do you know how much they're producing on an annual basis do you actually realize how much the voids are costing them do they realize how much the maintenance is costing them there are so many ways that they can save money as long as they put more money into their pocket as long as you can put more money in their pocket than they're making today then they will want to do the deal with you and that is very simple So, in a nutshell, guys, there you have it. You've seen how easy it is to upscale this business model to achieve as little as £3,000 income per month, which, in essence, if you work on the basis of around £500 a month, is around six, six properties. You can learn the entire process um, on the next Rent to Rent Masterclass. So, the next one that I'm running is actually on the 24th and 25th of March. It's actually been based, it's actually in Birmingham. Uh, and what I'll be doing, it, it is with myself. I sorry, I'll keep, I'll keep referring back to it. So it's a two-day course with me, showing you the fastest way, the cheapest way, and the most profitable way to set up your first rent-to-rent -rent property. Now, what makes this different to any other rent-to-rent -rent workshop is that we're going to be doing lots of live calls. So lots of live calls. So first of all, we're going to understand what rent-to-rent -rent is, how it works, and how it can operate in a lot more detail. Second of all, uh, you can have all the contracts, you can have all the documentation uh, so that you can start it pretty much the very next day. Third of all, I'm going to be showing you how to go direct to the landlords and how to, you know, we'll be, go we'll be doing live calls on the day to agents, landlords, and also we're going to do a special negotiations tactic that I've, I don't think I've ever done as a scheduled process before. So one thing that we're going to do, quickly go through this and I'll, show, I'll tell you what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you how to find an endless supply of tenants so you never have to worry about voids. I'll be showing you my rent to rent profits calculator. So there's lots of calculators that I use. I use a profits calculator. I use a cash flow calculator. And you get, um, you get all the templates. So you get the management agreement, you get the lease agreement because there's two kinds of agreements depending on the kind of property that you take on and who the landlord is. Uh, there's the letters, uh, letters to HMI landlords, letters to single let landlords. There's the templates for all the adverts that we put out, so newspaper adverts, leafleting. You get all those documentation so that you can you can take it away with you. You get a recording of the whole workshop, 
and you got all the presentation sides. So as I said, you get the management contracts, you get the guarantor documents, you get the guarantor documents, you get the tenant moving in, and you get the how to furnish your property guide. You get the marketing letters to homeowners, the marketing letters to landlords, and the landlord persuasion sheet. You get the proven checklists. You get to how to make your room stand out online. Remember talking about how we can furnish it so that our, our rooms look much better than anything else that's in the marketplace so that you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> so it's on the 24th and 25th of March, and uh, the price of it is 997 per person. And all you got to do is you've got to just click on that link below. Bear in mind, one thing that I will do is um, I'll put this link. Uh, quite a few people said, so can you put the link in here? I'll put the link in the actual box. and I've just sent it to everyone. One thing that I actually do is that I actually give everyone a 100% money back guarantee offer. Because if you buy the workshop, you risk nothing because you're covered by the 100% uh, money back guarantee. If you attend the day, uh, day one, and if you're not completely satisfied, all you're going to do is say so. We'll give you a full refund. No questions asked, no hassles, no forms to fill out. No problem at all. Now, here's a couple of people. Now, JC uh, attended just over three years ago. And I'm still in contact with JC, by the way. Uh, in just year one, he managed to get a portfolio of 18 properties. Now, JC is quite a remarkable young man. He's actually based over in Croydon. Uh, as a result of that, he's adapted this model and he's gone on to take on timeshares. Uh, over all pretty much around the world so on 18 properties is generating a cash flow of 50 just under fifteen and a half thousand pounds a month is it is its entire portfolio is around Croydon in South London a couple of questions that come in I'll tell you what guys if you want you can start writing your questions now and what we'll do at the end of the presentation I'll spend a bit of time just going through the questions so that's JC so you can see his process as to how he got there. And this is actually uh, actually a screenshot of his actual process of how he got there. Now, Giresh, I speak about Giresh yeah, a hell of a lot. He's a, he's, a, he's a lovely gentleman. So he's been working as a full-time consultant pediatric, uh, pediatric nurse in Birmingham for generating a very healthy salary, £120,000 salary. But he was working a very 70 to 80 stressful hour week and he lived for his holidays and uh, weekends and holidays now Giresh came to me in 2000 and we're well, in 2018 he came to me in 2016 he goes Arsh, I need to move away from this I, you know I love the job but it's burning me out so I sat down with Giresh went through this whole process and as a result of that he's gone off and done direct to landlord only he's based in Newcastle uh, he's going to do direct to the landlord only, and he's got the best part of 15 properties. And as a result of that, he now has his time to himself. He's very a lot more relaxed, and he's he's done it, and he's quit his job as a pediatric uh, pediatric consultant. So Susie Bates is another young lady. She's based in Leicester, and she's generating in excess of three thousand pounds per month cash flow. My question is, are they any different to you? No, they're not. All they've done is that they've put their doubts aside for long enough to give this a try and no risk to them. And they've achieved unbelievable results faster than they did dream. I could go on for quite a while talking about more testimonials. So here's some of the guys that have been on uh, been on the workshop previously. Now, one thing I will say is that I appreciate that not everyone can attend a workshop. Uh, well, not everyone can attend a workshop in person. Therefore, we want to include everyone on this, and therefore, there are multiple ways to get involved. So the first one is that I'd love for you to attend in person and take advantage of the networking opportunity and meet in person as well. Second is that you could live stream from the comfort of your own home. And uh, so when we talk about live stream, we talk about you watching it as you are right now, but you also get the live video cam so that you can watch all the slides. You can watch us make the phone calls um, uh, to the agents and to the landlords, and you can follow it as you are as if you're in the room. So you don't have to leave the comfort, you don't have to leave your house. And the third one is that you purchase the recordings, which comes with all the associated documentation anyway. So <clears throat> imagine never, never, never having to do a day's work for anyone else for the rest of your life. No more boss, no more commuting, no more pressures, no more financial worries. And you have a regular and reliable £3,000 monthly income from working less uh, less than one day a week. 
So all you can do is simply uh, book yourself into a course. It's not 24th, 25th of June, sorry, it's 24th, 25th of March. And all you do, you copy that link in there. Um, my plan is to help as many landlords as possible through the difficult time ahead. I'm confident by the end of 2018, my rent to rent portfolio will give me in excess of £50,000 per month. And you can do this exactly the same when you use a simple system. And as I said, it's the 24th and 25th of March and it's covered by a money back guarantee. So what I'll do, I'm now going to spend a bit of time going through how uh, all the questions that we've got coming through. Okay, so question. Is it possible for an investor not living in the UK to use a rent-to-rent -rent strategy by using a managing agency to run the HMO or is it too difficult? Believe it or not, I, I'm assuming, uh, sorry, apologies if I pronounce your name incorrectly, Stathis is, <clears throat> yes, it is possible. You've just got to factor the cost of managing agents into your costings. And off the back of that, yeah, there's nothing nothing stopping you. Believe it or not, that's actually a very good selling point to an agent. So if you were to say to them, well, I'll tell you, if I take the property on, I will actually give you that property back because then that agent will be making two times commission and more important they will be comfortable with the client of clientele that is going to go into the property because they're going to be putting it in and they're going to be putting them in there okay so Roy says do you think rent to rent can be done in article 4 areas Roy unfortunately for you to turn a property into a HMO in an article 4 area is not going to be impossible it's going to be time consuming and from my personal experience landlords will not wait for you to go off and get planning permission so you may need to look at a different area yeah uh, there's yeah you may need to look at a different area okay so Billy says when did you start doing the masterclass so I've been running the masterclass for a couple of years what well, actually that's a very good point Billy one thing that I forgot to say is that for this workshop only i'm trying i'm trialing something new so um one thing that people or sometimes i find that people lack when they come to come to the master classes they lack the negotiation skills so one thing that we are going to do on the sunday is that all delegates are going to have to meet me for a very early morning session when we talk about early morning session we're talking like seven o'clock between six and seven o'clock and we're going to take you to a field, a marketplace, where you can negotiate. So we're going to take you to almost like a car boot sale. And the, the reason why I say the car boot sale is quite an interesting point. is because at car boot sales, people are there to try and sell their property. Uh, well, not their property, their belongings for as much as possible. Now, that's great because what you're there to do is try and buy it for as cheap as possible. And as a result... That is the start of your negotiation tactic. And we're not talking about stupid money. All we're doing is we go there with 20 pounds in our pockets. And as a result, you're going to go and see if you can get it for as cheap as possible. And then you to, really want to try and negotiate stuff that you're going to use on a day to day basis or predominantly in your next HMO. And that's something that no other rent to rent uh, educator is doing. So, okay. So, how would you make rent-to-rent -rent work in areas with more rooms available than people looking for a room, for example, Preston? Now, believe it or not, Roy, Preston is a fantastic area. And the one thing that you have to also bear in mind is that, uh, best way of describing this, I know, I know Preston extremely well. Uh, so this is quite an interesting one. You've got to bear in mind that a spare room is only one portal, one advertising mechanism. Not all agents advertise this stock. Uh, not, uh, not all agents advertise this stock on there. More importantly, uh, not all people will be just looking at spare room. So you, you've got to bear in mind that there'll be other places that you can advertise. E easy spare room, uh, e sorry, easy roommate is one. You've got the back of the paper. You've got the, uh, you could find an agent to advertise them on right move. And if you have a look, there aren't actually, you know, Preston is quite thriving university town so there's lots of ways that you can actually advertise it and by making yours the most appealing rooms in that location 
there's no reason why you can't fill them. Okay, so Andrew says, what's the best way to get some of the deals you offer through your email marketing? Best thing to do, Andrew, is call me. You know, email are great, but sometimes emails get caught up with um, with other emails. And yeah, so always call me. So is there going to be another date too? Unfortunately, we haven't got um, we haven't got another date booked in yet. Okay, so Victor says, how much would the recordings be? So basically, uh, Victor, the recordings are the same price as the workshop because you get all the documentation as you would. What I would suggest is obviously. If you're uh, if you're purchasing the recordings, you might as well attend the live stream and also get the recordings of it as well. So Charles said, "Really, fifty grand a month?" Yes, Charles, because bear in mind that at the moment my average is around between eight and nine hundred pounds per month cash flow per property. We've got around well, we've got thirty eight properties at the moment, and by the end of by the end of uh, two thousand eighteen, I want to have that minimum fifty properties. So yes, it is possible. Okay, so Joe says, where can we purchase the recordings? What you have to do, Joe, is you have to, uh, what I will do for those that are interested, is I've, I've got the recording from the last workshop as well. So if you wanted to start from tomorrow, anyone that purchases a workshop uh, for the following workshop for the 24th and 25th, I'll even throw in the last workshop from, I think we did it in, last workshop was, I think, middle of last year. Um, and so you can have that. There's almost a freebie as well. Okay, so Stephen says, I can't attend those dates. Uh, I can't attend those dates. Let's have a quick look. Rex says, how long does it take to apply again a new HMO license? Now, Rex, that's a great question. Reason being is that every council is completely different. So for argument's sake, I know that Wolverhampton are running quite behind at the moment. Um, and there's certain councils that are inundated with applications, but the law states that as long as you put the application in, you can start to occupy the property. So don't get too hung up on waiting for the applicant for the license to come through before you start doing that. Okay, so um, Adam says, what do you think the total capital needed is to set up a rent to rent business, including the business car uh, costs roughly? So it's a difficult one, Adam, because it all depends on the kind of condition that you're taking the property on in. So we try and do it so that you break even, well, we break even within six months. That's that's the kind of model that I take on. I take a property on for circa seven years. That's what I want. I want longer, the better. I try and work on the benefit that, you know, the longer, the better, but bear in mind that I've got break clauses in there as well. So that doesn't really risk or bother me. Um, that do, that doesn't really bother me. So you've got to you've got to take that into consideration. So Mikel says, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. By the way, it says when's your next masterclass going to be? The honest answer is we're not sure. Just purely because last year I only ran one. Uh, this year it may be that we only run one, or we may run another one, but maybe later on in the year. One thing I would say to you is that if you are interested, book yourself onto this one. And if you can't make this one and you want to attend the next one. We'll have you down for that one, but you'll still get the recording for this one as well. Okay, so Asir says, how does it work? If you take it off an agent and then ask them to manage it for you, yes, that does happen. And, you know, that's one good way of getting an agent to work with you because, again, like I said, you're going to be making two lots of income. They're going to be making two lots of income from it. Is it possible to find tenants whilst an agency is managing it as well, or do you have to leave it completely for them to run? So, Stephen, unfortunately, it's either one or the other, because if you try and interfere and say, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a tenant that I want to put in, you've either got to manage it or you've got to let them manage it, because you know they met, that tenant that you find may not fit their criteria, or you know it's, it's all very much it's what I would say for you to speak to the agent. Um, for you to speak to the agent and go from there. So Amit says, Arsh, I am in. Okay, brilliant, fantastic. Look forward to seeing you on 24th and 25th. Um, if you attend the event in Birmingham, do you also get the recording? Yes, you do, Sam, in, in, a, in a nutshell, because anyone that attends the workshop will get the recording. 
Uh, does it require massive build work? No, it doesn't. Uh, well, it, it depends. Again, it comes down to the quality of the stock that you're taking on. If the property is in need of a lot of renovation, then yes, obviously, there will be some build work. But if it's not, then no, it won't. Is there a break clause from the landlord point of view as well? How long? Now, Phil, the good thing with rent to rent is all subject to negotiation. When we say subject to negotiation, um, uh, it's all subject to negotiation because what you negotiate with that landlord is all dependent on how good you negotiate. Now, for argument's sake, uh, the one that I went to see on Friday where the landlord has been left a property back from his last tenants in a right hole, I've said to him that I want a minimum of six months rent free. Uh, minimum of six months rent free and even after that we're then going to have a low rent for the first few months and then the rent increases by certain tiers for the next few years so you know it all depends uh, with regards to break clauses you know landlords can sometimes say well we want a break clause in year three but I will say well you can only exercise your break clause if I've done something wrong if I've not done anything wrong, if I've not missed the payment or if I've not kept the property to standard, then there's no reason for you to exit uh, to exercise that break clause. Uh, Nigel says, has your agreements been checked by solicitors? Yes, they were created by solicitors. So how much does it cost to get HMI license? How, how long on average does it take? So give me an example, Abdul. So in Wolverhampton, it costs on average around £650, which is equivalent to £150 a year. But you pay the 650 up front and it's for a five year period. Every area, uh, every uh, every area is cost dependent. So, one thing that you could do, Abdur, is look for your local council, whichever council you're thinking of, and on their website it should tell you how much it costs. Okay, Stephen says, uh, if you think I work, uh, do you think if I'm working nine to five, then it's better to give it to an agent for them to handle for me? Now, Stephen, that's the thing: is that agents will will never do as good a job as you, uh, and that that's a fact. Unfortunately, they'll never do as good a job as you because, as far as they're concerned, you're another digit on their books. If that makes sense, uh, you've got to bear in mind that you're going to be reliant on the income of this to pay the landlord so you need to make sure that you know personally if I was you I would manage it myself initially and then with a view of you know the more that you scale up then probably potentially get a property manager in how much is how many rent to rents you think is too much for one person to run all comes down to you and your personality in all in all honesty and your ability to manage Debbie says, what's the best way to avoid voids? Simple question, a uh, simple answer is when a tenant starts to give you notice, you start advertising that room straight away so that you have pretty much a one in, one out basis. That's what we try and do. So as soon as the tenant gives us four weeks notice, we don't wait. We don't wait for, uh, for a tenant to leave and then start advertising it. We start advertising it at its early, earliest point and then we also try and go ask the tenant that's moving out to accommodate viewings as well. So Alphonse says, does the price include accommodation? Unfortunately not, uh, Alphonse. Great question. Uh, great trying to negotiate something extra, but unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, okay, so are there any councils in central London that allow HMI line? <clears throat> are there any councils in central London that allow HMI licenses? Unless you're in an Article 4 area, you, it's permitted development for you to create a property into a HMO. So there's no issues. So Mikhail says, after two days meeting, what follow-up support do you provide? Now, Mikhail, that's a great question because you'll, you'll be able to get access to me directly. And uh, in a minute, I'll put up my mobile number, which you'll notice that you can come through to me. And if there are any questions, you've got any questions, or uh, we also have a Facebook support group, if there are any questions and you want to speak to me directly, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, so Alex says, how can I implement rent to rent in London? Would it work? Absolutely. If anything, like I said to you, agents and landlords across London are more inclined to do rent to rent than anywhere else around the country. Uh, well, sorry, that's the wrong way to say it, but they, the property costs a lot more, therefore their outgoings are a lot more, 
and therefore they're more eager to do something where someone can have it on a long-term basis. Okay, so Jeanette says that, can you uh, go through the ins and outs of rent to rent scheme? What I'll do, Jeanette, this is actually been recorded. So what you can do, um, what you can actually do is that I'll be sending this out uh, so that you can so you can watch it. Okay, so Alphonse says, where about will it be in Birmingham? So where it's actually at the Jury's Inn Hotel, which is on Broad Street in Birmingham. So it's on the main, main drag uh, of, of Broad Street. So there's lots of places. Now, sometimes we tend to go out uh, in the evenings, etc. But um, so yeah, so there's it's right central Broad Street. So if you're coming on train, it's literally walking distance. So <clears throat> someone says, "Does rent to rent work in Scotland?" I'll be honest, no. Uh, the reason being is that rent to rent doesn't work in Scotland. But one one thing that you can do is lease options also don't work in Scotland, but one thing that you could do, if you're intending on buying the property, you could do it on a lease option, uh, not a lease option, exchange and delay completion basis. Okay, so Michael says, why not more Why not more than seven years on rent to rent? Because then you have to lodge the agreement uh, as an interest on the property with land registry. and uh, Landlords would get very nervy about that. What sort of house insurance do we need for rent to rent? Pretty much HMO insurance, because that's in essence what you're creating. Um, okay, do we have uh, workshops in London? No, we don't. We always hold them in the Midlands. A, because that's where I'm based, and B, is that we find that people up north don't travel down south, and people from south don't travel up north. So we keep it in the centre. So Mikhail says, do we source any rent to rent deals in Birmingham all the time? Altaf says, is rent to rent on less than three years viable? Personally, I'd say no, just purely because bear in mind that if you've got some income, uh, if you've spent some money on the property, um, if you've spent some money on the property, it's going to take you the best part of six months to eight months to recoup that money. And for a return on investment, to have two years worth of cash flow for the time and effort that you're going to put into it, I'd want it as long as possible. Uh, is it better to do rent to rent as a company or as an individual? Always do it as a company because company is limited liability, limited the risk. Uh, and more importantly, agents are probably more inclined to deal with the company than as an individual. However, you could start off as an individual and then uh, form it towards a company. Just something to bear in mind is that if you start from fresh, you won't have any trading history as a company, so they may not want to deal with a company that has no trading history. Uh, Jeanette said, all the, all the rent to rent properties you offer HMO or Reddit, HMO ready. Depends, every property is different. Every property is different because every property, uh, every property has a different scenario. What's the average amount of cash needed to start this business? Okay, so let's just say that you were to take, uh, if you were to, you need your first month's rent. It all comes down to how much work the house needs because if the, if the work if the house needs no work you've just got to pay your first month's rent if you're taking on a, a failing or a or a hmo that's underperforming you know in essence all you need is a first month's rent that's the absolute minimum it depends uh, what what you start then going into is you know how much money do you require but if you take a property that on that's in completely completely need of full refurbishment then you know the question is how much how much is it going to cost to do that work so i'm just yeah that's that's pretty much like uh, asking how long is a piece of string you know uh if you if you look for the right kind of stock you can get away with paying as little as you know the first month's rent okay so billy said how would you fund a rent to rent with little or no money apart from jv finance um very simply is that if you well you'll need your first month's rent if you're you can't unless you're gonna unless you're gonna be able to negotiate a month's rent grace from the landlord uh and off the back of that then go and fill the property fit quickly in order to pay the landlord for the next month which is tight but is possible depending on how hungry you are 
then that could work. Alternatively, you know, the option then is JV, uh, JV Finance. So finally, just want to say thank you for taking the time to learn how you can make a recurring property income without buying a house. Hope that you'll use these secrets to build a property business so that you too can decide if you want to quit your job. And one thing I'll always say is that if you've still got questions, unanswered questions, feel free to come back to me. Uh, you're more than welcome to give me a call directly on my mobile. Probably best tomorrow, uh, now as I retire for the evening, and um, see what we can do and see how we can progress further from there. So on that note, guys, uh, I wish you all the very best of success. If there are any other questions, you can come through to me directly. Alternatively, you can, uh, you can join me on the 24th and 25th of uh, March in, in Birmingham. So on that note, I wish you all the best. Take care. Good night. God bless.